Okay. Hey everybody, welcome to week two, which is dealing with ggplot and visualization, ggplot being the tidy versus tool for data visualization. Um, last week I had a lot of formal notes that I went through and this week it's a little bit more loosey goosey because typically ggplot is what a lot of people start with when they're using the tidyverse. And so I think I'm kind of assuming everybody has a little bit of past experience with it and if you don't, that's totally fine because I'm still going to do a little bit of a basic walkthrough and then we're going to kind of, you know, walk through a few examples and then I'm going to open it up to everybody to, you know, ask about, you know, if there were certain aspects of the chapter you had a problem with and we'll jump into that. So, um, of course, the first thing that you need to do when you're working with ggplot is, um, you're not even worried about loading the tidyverse yet. First, you need to familiarize yourself with your data. Because if you don't know what kind of different variables you're using in different situations, it's going to be pretty much useless when you go to try to visualize something and you're going to have the wrong kinds of variables going up against different things. So one tool that I like to use when I'm just looking at something really quick, and I'll show this here in our studio once I remember how to use Zoom. Okay, first I do need to load the tidyverse because that's just how rules work. And if you're wanting to use ggplot, you'll have to do that every time at the very, like it's the very start of every R script file I have is, you know, like library tidyverse, library lubridate, which I use for going through things with dates in them and um, tidyverse or library janitor, which goes and cleans up all the, um, especially if you bring things in from Excel, it cleans up all of the um, variable names. So those are some super helpful packages. But I'm going to go ahead and just show you something that you can do with your data to get a really quick look at it once you've loaded it in. So we're, we're just going to use the MPG data set that's within ggplot to do this. So I'm going to type glimpse parenthesis MPG. And hopefully you're able to see what's there very well. Basically, you get an idea of what different type of data we're dealing with with each of the variables and also you know, a few examples of it. So it's basically if you were to go and hit head on every single um, variable, except for you did it, it does them all at once. You also get an idea of how many rows there are, as well as columns. And so that is one really quick, quick and dirty way to familiarize yourself with the data. So one of the things that just looking at it from here, I can see, okay, year is going to be, year is the type of, year is going to be a discrete type of variable. Um, and I get the idea that city and highway just from how widely ranging they are, that they are going to be, um, I can never remember these words, but they're going to be continuous variables. And then things like manufacturer are going to be more discrete. Well, yeah, close enough. So that is the first couple things you want to do is load the tidyverse and then just start looking at your data to get an idea of what you're looking for. And then the fun starts. That's when we start doing the ggplot calls. And I kind of put, put up a little bit. I'm going to close the screen share for a minute so you can see the board back here a little bit better. So what I tried to do is give you an idea of a, this is a little bit of a somewhat complicated, but also simple ggplot call. So the first thing you'll always have is this ggplot call. And hopefully you can see this. As I try to put it on my shoulder, I did not think this staging through as well as I could. And under ggplot, one, the first call that we have is data equals mpg. And so that is telling us what data that we're using, what data set to look for. And from there, what we did is we added mapping equals AES. And then within those parentheses, the AES parentheses, it's 
X equals display, Y equals highway. And so that is basically telling it, you know, for all of our charts, unless we say differently, for everything we're doing in this ggplot call, the data that we're using is MPG and our X variable and our Y variable mappings are going to be display and highway respectively. And then the important thing there on the end is the plus on the same line as that call. You always want them to be on the end of your call before you go to your next line. And next is when we actually have the pretty stuff that we want. So this is going to be how we create our scatter plot that with geom point. So that one we for pretty much every geom that you could possibly want, you know, if it's a line chart or a violin chart or anything, there's a different geom. So for scatter plots, it's geom point. And then we're going mapping. It pretty much matches what was up there before. Mapping equals AES. And then we're doing color equals class. This is actually an example that's in the book. And then again, because we're going to add a third layer to this, we have a plus after it. And then we add a geom smooth, which will be a um, smoothing line. So the reason that I made them different colors, though, is to point out one very important thing. This ggplot call, everything that you put in here is what we call global. So like I said, as long as whatever you have posted in here, like this data equals MPG, that tells it throughout the rest of these layers, unless we say differently, we're using the data from the MPG data set. And also if you put, ma also if you put mapping in here, in this global, then it's gonna take whatever you have in here within your global call for mapping as its mapping rules, which is why we had to call out specifically that we wanted the points to be of a, specified by certain colors up here. I know it's kind of clear as mud, but I promise the examples that I was able to find will help out a little bit. So let's jump over to those. This is the wonderful, beautiful, and amazing ggplot flipbook, which I just discovered this week, made by Gina Reynolds. And she will go into her theory in here, where she's using ggplot in what she calls slow ggplotting. So basically what she's doing through this flipbook is she's showing you every single, every single step she's going along with as she's adding a new layer. So I think it is like the most helpful thing that I've seen as far as trying to figure out, you know, how things work in ggplot. So let me get to a quick example. I'm going to make sure to have links in this. I'm going to put together some like formal slides in a couple days and I'll have the links to this in there, but I can drop it in the Slack when we're done. So let's see, we'll do this one. All right, this is a Christmas tree set. And you can see down here, there's a little example of what we're looking at. We got years, numbers of trees sold. Types, types of trees and all of that. So here's what, here's what she does. Again, she's got her global call and she's telling it that everything, unless I tell you something different, we're going to use this DTA data set, which is what she uses for the Christmas tree data. And this is also part of her mapping call still, but she's putting it on different lines just to kind of show you the things that she's spelling out. So that AES that we had up here that was, that we were calling X and Y, she's doing something similar. She's calling out X equals year. And so you can actually see what it affected is down at the bottom. You now have your X axis and it's using year. So when we go to the next step and she does number of trees, you now see how it's working with the Y axis. Like this, like I said, this was kind of an amazing thing when I saw like, oh, this really like walks you through every single step of what ggplot is doing. So that was the end of her, sorry, that was the end of her um, ggplot global call. You can see because now there's a plus at the end of the previous line. And she has added her points with geom point. And then her next thing we do She's adding some AES in here. So some more aesthetics, that's what AES is short for. And these are getting 
there's a little bit of complication in there. Um, basically, she's turning type of tree from a character into a factor and then reversing the order. But that is basically the col equals tells you that's how she's changing so that some of them are red and some of them are blue. And again, she has to do it, she's doing that within mapping because of, if she did it outside of mapping, it would be just because she wanted everything to be red or everything to be blue. Like that is one of those big stumbling blocks that I have personally when I do ggplot is I keep forgetting when to put things within the AES and when to not. And this is her adding a geom smooth. And the rest of that kind of just goes into the methodology, which I will stumble and stutter over if I try to pretend like I know what it is right now. And then what you see, keep seeing as we go down is that she's just adding more and more layers and creating, you know, more and more interest into this. Like the last one, she changed what color she has and now she's adjusting her Y limit so that she can rein in the graph a little bit. I think she had, maybe she wanted to get rid of the little extra space she had at the top. And here is where she's starting to label her graph in German. Cool. And then she's using themes. But yeah, I hope stuff like that is like a, there are like a dozen different examples like this that are in this um, presentation that Gina put together that I will share with you all later. Um, but really, I, like I said, I kind of wanted to do a quick and dirty walkthrough on, you know, kind of the basic ggplot and then just open it up to whatever problems people have with data viz so far. So if anybody's got any thing that they stumbled upon in the chapter, take it away. That slow walk is uh, really cool. I love that. Yeah, my mind was kind of blown when I saw it. Ooh, maternal leave data. I don't know, is there anything that, you know, people had, you know, difficulty trying to remember the difference between something and the other, and then the book kind of put, put it in a way that made you, oh, okay, I can remember that from now on. For me, the, the global and local, the reason I'm sharing that is because it was just the aha that I had reading back through this time. And one of the things that one of the parts goes over is faceting. I think that was the 3.5. And here you get a look at how Gina did it in hers. I say, I find it interesting that the, um, don't have to use the mapping equals and then the AES, because I got so used to doing that when I was practicing. Mm -hmm. So I guess you don't have to have that. No, that that's optional, and also the data equals is optional. But I I personally do it out of just like good practice. So like the next person who you know sees my stuff, if they've you know never used ggplot before, they can go back and be like, okay, well I know what he's doing, and so that's just kind of it's kind of good practice for me. Yeah, I love this. Thank you. Yeah. This is actually fascinating data. <laughs> Sorry if I'm distracted. I'm just like, huh. But yeah, if anybody's got any other questions or any other directions they want to take this in tonight, fire away. This is pretty much what I had. I, I was a little woefully unprepared. If not, we can just nerd out and keep looking through these examples because these are really, really nice.
Yeah, yeah posi position is also something that I've always had trouble with. And I guess I don't really deal with it too much here. There was one, if I go back, I can, we'll just keep going forward until I find it. But especially with bar charts, for the longest time, I will just sit there and be confused with all the V-just and H-just and everything under the sun. Here, I think this is maybe the one that I was thinking of. Nope. This is Luke randomly runs through data. Also, somebody just yell stop if one of these looks interesting and you want to just nerd out on it. Good Lord. She's definitely put a lot of work into this. Ooh. That's interesting. If anybody's a movie nerd. Yeah, I can't find the example I was thinking of. And there's way too many pages here to try to flip through right now. If I go back to the front, I can. Was. Oh, it was the one we were looking at. But yeah, positioning is something that I struggle with all the time and I always have to look back and forth at. So basically, if there's any part of this chapter like you have to look back at, don't worry, because if you're not using it like for every single chart you're doing every single day, it's perfectly reasonable and that's why the book is there. <laughs> 